welcome to the Meyer Haven. Here at Taxmar, we like to share stories and explore our artists and friends' artworks that they will put in their living room if money and space were an object. Perhaps you would like to start to introduce yourself and your first choice for your art haven. Okay, uh, well, my name is Steve. Uh, together with Mark, I co-founded Taxmart. Um, and uh, I believe we have to have three works, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, uh, the first work I'll choose uh, is a statue. Uh, so if anybody's ever been to uh, India, I don't, have you ever been to India? Yes. So have, you, have you been to the caves at Kailash and no. uh, Ellora? Well, these are a set of caves that were excavated in the, around about the 7th century AD. And uh, there are about 35 of them. Uh, and they're notable, they were carved uh, primarily to create uh, areas of religious retreat. So some of them are Buddhist caves, some of them are Hindu caves, and then there are some Jain caves. And one of the reasons they're famous is that they have the largest monolithic sculpture in the creation in the, in the world. It's a temple carved out of a single block of stone. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, but that isn't, uh, so while I was, uh, I, I went to these caves in, in 1988 and it was, I remember vividly, it was an incredibly hot day and it was my 32nd birthday or quite close to it and I was very stressed because um, all my life I thought I was going to die when I was 32 and it was really hot and I was thinking, I'm going to have a heart attack, I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> but of course I didn't. Um, but anyway, we went into these caves and inside, uh, they're, they're also really well known because there's a statue of a sleeping Buddha, which is mm -hmm. absolutely extraordinary. It's colossal. And, but although that was really impressive, the one that made the biggest impression on me was a, uh, a statue of Shiva um, impaling a, a demon, uh, Andaka, on his sword. And uh, it really made me think about sculpture, the reason I liked it was it, it made me think about what the world was like before we had moving images. We've of course had magic lanterns for many years, so people have been accustomed to the idea of sort of animated illusions, but the actual idea of real moving images is fairly recent in, in human history, obviously. Uh, and I suddenly realised, looking at this statue, that if people had never seen a moving image, if they looked at a statue that was sort of in a sort of dynamic pose, they would literally see it as moving. It would have appeared quite miraculous to them because of the way the statue is sort of constructed. And this particular statue is quite extraordinary because Shiva, uh, you, you know, is a sort of mass of arms and he's got this sword coming out and it's going into this demon who's rather small. Um, uh, and there's a couple of women sitting at his feet, and uh, it, it's sort of, it's just the most amazing piece of work, and it's big. You know, so what you can't see from the, what you can't tell from the photos is when you're in this cave, which is pretty dark, I mean, it's probably better illuminated now, but when I was there, it was practically lit by candlelight. It was really dark, gloomy, and there is just this massive thing uh, carrying out this vigorous homicidal activity uh, right in front of you. I mean, it's very, very, it's an amazing very nice. piece. I guess my second one is much closer to home um, and it's an artwork I already own, uh, so I don't really need lots of money or space for it and it's hanging in my sitting room. Um, and it's really simple. It's a piece by my grandmother. Uh, it was uh, painted. She, she was quite an unusual woman, obviously, because everybody's grandmother is really special, and mine was really special, but she genuinely was unusual. She, she went to the Slade in, must have been around about 1920, 22, very unusual in those days, and she was a very committed painter throughout her life, but of course had to, uh, had to balance that with bringing up six children. Um, and, and running a house, but she never stopped. And shortly before she died, she, in the kitchen, she had some tulips that were in a vase and they slowly died and sort of they drooped and wilted and faded. And she painted them at different stages of this journey just before she died in a way that I think really was making a very clear statement about how she felt about her life. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a remarkable work. Well, my third choice is a bit of a cheat, and it's not just my choice, because I think it would be everybody's choice. Uh, and I, but 
I've sort of, I'm, I'm using it as an example because I think that we obsess so much about responding to the work that we see, work that's been created, you know, over the thousands of years, but we don't often think about the work that's going to be created in the future. You know, which artists now, what are they producing, how will they develop? Um, especially artists at college, you know, people are just coming to the market. And, and when you go to degree shows, you know, what I think is so interesting is you look at their work and see how, are they, how will they see the world in, in 10 or 20 years' time. And, and combining that idea with, with the fact, with, you know, how art is ultimately, is, is hugely personal. I, I, I think it's always interesting when you meet people, you know, as you often do, who are not really terribly interested in art. Or they look at stuff and think, oh, my, you know, my daughter could do that. <laughs> and I think the reason they say that is really simple, is they just haven't seen enough work. Because if you think about it, how many works have you seen in your life that you look at and think, I just have to have that? And until you have that experience, and I think everybody can have that experience, until you can have that experience, you, you don't get it. But as soon as that happens, you just once, you know, you go, oh, my God, for my third Art Haven piece, uh, I would choose uh, a photograph that hasn't yet been taken, and, but it is of me, and it has been taken by my grandchildren who do not exist yet, but I really hope I have some, uh, and it is on their mantelpiece long after I have died. That is the work that I would like to have on my wall, <laughs> but of course, I never will. Hi, I'm Tom Tomasi and welcome to our channel. I hope you like my art haven and if you do, please comment and share and, and please subscribe. And if you'd like to take part and give us your three wonderful works of art that you love in your living room, uh, please drop us a line. Thanks so much, bye.